So I shot my first roll of Harmon Phoenix. This was one of my favorite shots from the roll. This is my cat, Amos. Maybe six months old. Gazing out the window. Um, the short story of this video is I like this film way more than I thought I would. I had really low expectations and um, gonna share some thoughts. So why did I shoot this film in the first place? Uh, I'm mostly a black and white film photographer and um, I used to shoot a fair amount of color slide film but at some point that started to feel cost prohibitive and black and white is really more my thing anyways so it's been some years since I've shot color film but um, somebody gave me a roll um, well not just somebody um, a film lab gave me a roll and said hey Daniel you know give this a try and I thought well that's pretty cool you know Harmon's making color film um, maybe I'll give it a shot I didn't really know much about it I just I heard that Harmon was making color film so you know why do I think this is sort of a big deal is this is the this is the list the universe of who makes color film today uh, there's Kodak and then there's this uh, little family of companies that are sort of one, right? Um, in Wolfen, Germany. Uh, Orwo. Orwo? Oh, I've never actually said that out loud. Or, Orwo. Um, o R W O, Orwo. Right? And then there's now, there's a third member uh, to the party, Harmon. So that's not a lot of film manufacturers in the world, right? We we just went up 50%. Uh, and you might say, wait, you know, I, there are other companies that sell color film. And you know, this is, to be clear, this is not about who sells and markets color film. This is about who actually makes color film. Now, you know, Kodak has super high-tech you know, so-called, I think, two electron technologies, right? They are working with really high-tech color film. And that's not where these companies are yet. I, I mean, I'm not an expert. I don't really know what Oral is doing. But, um, right, I mean, this is all new R&D for Harman, but they've got a long way to go to get to Kodak. Um, so it's interesting I wanted to give it a shot. So what's the what's the first thing I did, right? I went online and I found this. <laughs> uh, no, I went, I, I, you know, I, I looked at reviews of the film. And so just to kind of flip through some of those, right? So if you went into Google and said, show me, you know, Harmon Phoenix reviews, you would find some sample shots, right? There's this one, which, you know, what's standing out. It's like really red, right? Uh, here's some... Uh, you know, I've heard people refer to, like, the mustard color of the film. Um, here, right, this is really showing how incredibly contrasty this film is. It's super, Look how super con uh, uh, saturated and contrasty that is. And, right, there's this. Um... And I don't want to be too critical of these photos, right? They're test photos. They're people that are just shooting this film for the first time. But, I mean, uh, sort of the take-home for me was like, wow, this I'm not really that inspired. The colors, man, there's like a lot of red and green and I don't know. Um, so I was actually not that inspired to shoot the, shoot the film. Um... And it, and it took me a couple weeks to finish my first roll. Right? And then even one of my favorite photographers, right, he's like, I hate this film. This was my only good image. Um, so, yeah. So what did I do? Well, I went to um, 
oh, before I jump to there, right? Just looking at right, there's there's Kodak Alaris that uh, sells Kodak's uh, 35 millimeter film to photographers. Uh, there's Kodak, and then these kind of like this like um, Filmotech, Innovascope, and Orwo, uh, which are really all three basically working in conjunction. <clears throat> um, yeah, but then back to Phoenix. Um, now, oh yeah, I need I need the PDF. So Harmon Phoenix PDF. So you know, it tells you it's experimental, or really, it's like a test film. It seems to be. I can't imagine that this is a finished product. Um, right, I think. New um, new iterations are coming. Uh, it is punchy. It is vibrant. And there's some there's some good advice in here. Uh, some advice that I borrowed was like, right, shoot, have your subject fill the frame. Um, right, use natural light, um, sunlight, and expect some wonky colors. <laughs> right? um, but then this little this was helpful. I think right this. This kind of matched what I saw, which was like, there's a lot of red and green sensitivity, not much blue sensitivity. And then also just the colors are coming out red and green. Um, and so I just, I got the idea to shoot with a light blue filter. Um, just to give the blue sensitivity uh, a fighting chance. So it's one thing that maybe I've done that other people didn't try. Um... Maybe that didn't matter if I had, you know, done done the scanning and, and editing all by myself. Maybe I could have compensated that way. Um, but I was going to send this to a lab and um, have them do it for me. So I, I popped on a, a light blue filter. Um, and I shut the whole roll with that filter on. So... A little bit more about, um, well, I got th I have three rolls of this. I've only shot one roll. Um, so th there's a, the film lab that reached out to me is Royal Lee Film Lab in Oakland. Uh, gave me the three rolls of film, uh, and they also did the development and the scanning on a Nor Noritsu um, and also made some prints and then back to here so this was my first first love um, I really like this picture I mean it's it's like as much as almost any photograph I've taken yeah I mean it's just a cat and I'm a cat guy so but I love the I love the contrast. I love the colors. It helps that he's um, an orange cat. <laughs> you know, it kind of like the colors this film naturally makes uh, are sort of the colors of the scene. So that worked out. Um, I'm using natural light. Um, not nothing super contrasty. This is a north facing window, right? This isn't like full sun, full shadows. It looks like it because of how hard these shadows are. But that's this was. Not that, right? The film is just super contrasty. Uh, I shot it around 160. I think it gave, you know, about a third of a stop extra. Um, and I'm glad I did. Uh, I'll say this film has very little exposure latitude. Underexposed shots are gone. You have no chance um, of recovering a great image, uh, if any image. And then overexposure is also not that good. Like the colors get bad. Um, so it's really a very, very narrow, I would say, you know, you want to somewhere between 100 and 200, call it 160 and nail your exposure. Um, so, you know, and then to look here, this is the, the, the lab scan. Um, and right uh, also the the lab let me come in and do my own editing so right use their 
C41 and then their scanner, but then I got to do the final edits. And I will say that the white balance was a little tricky. Uh, right, Phoenix put out some recommendations. Um, and maybe just because, like, right, I had a light blue filter on, but I, I did my own uh, white, white balance adjustments by eye. And, um, right, I think that would be sort of the, I wouldn't expect a lab to nail your white balance, right? You, I would want um, files where I can, I can work with the white balance. Um, right, so these are, you know, massive TIFF files. Um, okay, so th just some other shots I liked from this one roll. Um, again, super contrasty. It's those same color, kind of that same color palette. Um, you know, another another one from the window series. You know, if we zoom in a little bit here, right? I would not call this a high definition film, right? There's not that much detail. Um, here's my son. You know, Again, these are inside, and it's winter time. Um, a lot of them are like one fifteenth to one thirtieth of a second, um, using a, like a. I think this is a Leica MP. So it's hard to know like how much of the lack of sharpness is maybe hand holding at a fifteenth of a second and a fifty millimeter lens. Um, this one though, I th you know, I was, yeah. So just you can see the image right um i wouldn't call the grain super attractive but it is grain and um yeah i, I like it enough and I, i'm not doing any sharpening or noise reduction of any sort it's just just straight out of the the scanner um <clears throat> i love this shot right this is the kind of shot I would take with black and white. Um, but I think color really helps because of the, right, the colors here and, and my orange cat. And so I like that this was color film. I get my new kitten Amos going after his tail. My son is painting. So uh, that's a winner. Uh, I also think, you know, what's what's nice about this is look at these colors, right? This These are actually, I mean, here's that red and that green. But you get a yellow and a purple. Um, so a little bit of a test of some other colors there. You know, this is like this, this stuff that's darker and a little underexposed just gets real muddy and not sharp. Um, but I sort, of, I, mean, I sort of like that for this image, right? It's... Um, Right, I am a film photographer after all. Like, you know, I work with unsharpness, and <clears throat> you know, so. And then here, um, this was a nice test, right? That here's that sunlight hitting uh, my other son's shirt, and this is a rainbow shirt: red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pur pink. Right, that's almost like. You know, it's actually kind of getting all the colors there. Um, right. Super contrasty, saturated, um, you know, gr grainy, you know, not sharp. Oh, look at this blue. Huh. Yeah, you know, like here, like this is, I'm so used to sh shooting with sharp black and white films, right? There's just nothing like that here. Um, man, I got lucky. I got lucky on this. I got lucky because right, I'm working with such small exposure latitude, but I got this one, right? And this is a tough, the amount of backlight on that. Um, but I got it. <clears throat> you know, I think this is, I would guess this is more about the lens than about the film. I mean, it just looks like, right? It looks like purple fringing. It's like, that looks like a lens thing. <clears throat> um, 
I'll zoom into 100%. Right, I do think if your appetite is for right 40 60 megapixel digital cameras with sharp lenses right this probably is like um, but that's not what I'm interested in um, think about pointillism this was my wife's favorite of the set she loves her shower curtain and these are not quite accurate colors but it's sort of a nice uh, nice color whatever rendition you know, again, the stuff in the shadows just like, um, I think it sort of works for this image, right? But it's, um, you definitely wouldn't want to end up trying to save, save something out of the shadows. That was important. Oh, and this was my, I attempted to do my own camera scan. So I, I'm, I don't consider myself, um, a great camera scanner with, for color. Um, it's been a while since I've put effort into that, but just to do, you know, I was kind of interested in kind of what I would get out of my own camera scan. Um, and I wouldn't make, I wouldn't make too much of sort of like the differences and maybe sharpness and detail because some of that might just be some of the, some settings I've applied that are really capture one doing some, some, uh, you know, I'd call these very pretty darn similar <clears throat> um, all right so, so circling back to I I thought I wouldn't like the film I, and um, I actually don't even really like color photography um, but I'm I sort of I sort of like some of these a lot and I feel like I learned some things so I am going to right, try to fill the frame with my subject. I'll probably keep shooting this 50 millimeter lens. Um, I don't know that I'll keep the light blue filter on. It's like I sort of feel like I had more success than other people. And maybe that was part of it. Um, but I also, it's like, I don't know. I kind of want to see what happened without the light blue filter on. Um, or maybe I should try a a dark blue filter um and then yeah i mean it's, it's got to be you know notice though i'm not showing you 36 shots right i threw away a lot and i'm somebody who takes a lot of pride in having a lot of keepers and i did not have a lot of keepers so i lost a lot to underexposure um or just super heavy contrast or just not able to save the white balance uh, especially like anything that was mixed lighting or um, <clears throat> especially like if it was oh there's another shot in here oh shoot didn't make it um, okay but you know it was this um, it was a shot where it was sunlight but it was sort of that bluish sunlight a lot of reflected light so it has a kind of a bluish cast and that came out underexposed and which just sort of tells me that, that it's just really like that blue sensitivity is just not really there and thinking about why it's like i sort of think Harmon is interested in marketing a 200 speed color film and they got there with this iteration probably by adding some extra sensitivity into some of the dyes but right it came out on not the not 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 blue sensitivity right it's um it's those extra dyes that they added for the red and green and um you know they probably know that these colors are so-called analog um i would guess the next iteration they'll they'll Right, they'll they'll balance it out, and it'll the colors will look more natural, and it won't the colors won't be so, you know, mustard or red or green or whatever it is, um, you know, and it'll be a, a finer grain, and it'll be sharper, and it'll it'll have you know more detail and more latitude, and but at that point, I don't know that I'm going to be interested in it anymore, right? The, um, you know, I think it's safe to say that what I like about this um, 
and it sort of you know relates back to how what I like about black and white photography. Right, I like this kind of contrasty. Right, I like that way it isolates you know the subject, and I don't. I'm not interested in accurate colors, and and I'm not interested in a lot of.